Hello and welcome to this guide to reason. In this first series of videos, we're going to have a look at how reason is put together, its different sections, how you navigate your way around them, what they do, the kinds of modules that you'll find in reason, and how they all work together to create this music production environment. In this first video, we're going to have a look at the different sections that make up reason's interface, what you can see on the screen at the moment. You'll see that there are a number of different sections here. Um, what we have is the mixer at the top, the rack section in the middle, and the sequencer section at the bottom. And in addition to those, you get the transport panel running along the bottom of the window and some project navigation sections around the edges here. Now we'll get into what those do a little bit later on, but first of all, uh, let's have a look at the rack. Now, the rack sits in the middle of the window usually. If we move the sequencer out of the way, we can see the rack. This is something that's been in Reason for a long time, and the idea is essentially that it recreates a rack of hardware, except unlike hardware, you can have as many modules in it as you want. It holds instruments, it holds effects, and other types of modules that generate sound. It also holds audio tracks, which allow you to record guitars, vocals, trumpets, or whatever else you want into a Reason project. If you hit the tab key on your keyboard, you can spin the rack around to see what's going on in terms of routing and patching everything. If you have a mouse with a wheel on it, you can spin up and down the rack, which is quite handy to know about. If your mouse doesn't have a wheel, you can use this navigation section here on the right to zoom up and down. That's something we'll talk about a bit later on, but it's worth knowing how to get to it. That's the tab key on your keyboard. Down at the bottom, you have the sequencer. And this is a pretty straightforward linear sequencer, a timeline left to right. Uh, this holds MIDI tracks, which trigger instruments. It also holds audio tracks, onto which you can record sound. And a little bit later, we'll see that it also provides you access to things like automation, block-based composition, and editing of audio and MIDI parts. The third main section in Reason is the mixer, which lives up at the top here. Now the mixer is a lot bigger than there is room for on the screen, and if you use your mouse again, you can see that we can pan all the way up and down this rather large mixer. All these sections can be split off separately to new windows, and that's something we'll look at a little bit later on, and makes your life a lot easier, because there's a lot going on in Reason, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily do lots of scrolling, you can split windows off, or you can keep everything on one screen and move between the sections by dragging windows, but we'll have a look at that shortly. So that was a look at how Reason's put together. In the next section, let's have a look at how its windowing system works.